Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. You're probably not used to seeing me late in the day and especially out of the vegetable garden, but I have a really cool topic for this week's video and it is about backyard mothing. And you're probably thinking, wait a second, what did she say? I'm talking about mothing and what it involves is gently capturing moths, looking to see what you caught, trying to identify them, and then releasing them back into the environment. Now, most moths are nocturnal, meaning they're active at night. There are some that are diurnal or active during the day, but there's so many amazing moths out there in the world that are active when we're all sleeping and we just have no idea what's out there. Now, I mostly took up mothing because I was trying to get some photographs of different kinds of moths that are the adult version of some vegetable garden pests. And that's for my new book, which is the Vegetable Garden Pest Handbook. But then I discovered it's kind of an addictive hobby and it's really inexpensive too. But the best thing of all is it's very educational. So today I'm going to show you what the equipment is how we set it up, and then in the morning, seeing what we caught, how we very carefully handle them, actually not even using our hands, and then we let them go again. Now this is our main piece of equipment, and it's about as basic as you can get. This is a collapsible clothes hamper, and we got it for six bucks at Target. Now you can get it from a lot of places for even less than that. So very inexpensive and very lightweight. And then what's in here is all sorts of torn up egg cartons. Everybody's got empty egg cartons, right? So no expense there. Basically what we did is we tore our egg cartons into quarters. And the reason we have these is because when the moths go into the trap, this is the trap, they want to find a place to kind of hide and also to rest. And so there's little nooks and crannies that they can go into. And so we stack these every which way in here. And that works really great. No expense regarding the egg cartons at all. And if you don't have any on hand, I bet you there's somebody you know who does. So now let me explain about light bulbs. This is our back porch light. And what we did is we took out the old light bulb and put in this black CFL or compact fluorescent light bulb, which we got through Amazon for $10. Now we've found that the old incandescent light bulbs generate a lot of heat and so they do attract moths, but the black light really attracts the moths. And you'll be interested to know that LED lights do not attract moths at all. They're just not generating any heat. So this is what we're using. We just turn it on at dusk and then we'll hang the trap over it and let it do its thing overnight. Okay, I've put the hamper onto the light fixture. And I also wanted to mention we used a little piece of twine and looped it around one of the handles of the hamper so I could also attach it to the light fixture and that way it stays level. So I've got the light on and we'll see in the morning what we cut. Good morning, everybody. Well, we've got a nice cool morning, which is perfect conditions for looking to see what's in our moth trap. And you know, I have to tell you every morning, it's like Christmas morning because you never know what's going to be in there. And we have seen some really cool moths. So I wanted to explain something. We have these little two ounce mini cups. You might think of them as condiment cups that you see at different kinds of restaurants and they have little snap-on lids. And then also a friend of ours uses a towel and taps the moth out of the carton onto it and leaves the carton over it while the moth kind of settles down a little and then he puts them into a container. I also use a butterfly net I'll just put it on my lap like this and I'll show you, but I tap the moth into here and then carefully put it into a container. But the point is they're very fragile and so I try to do everything without touching them with my hands. Very important. So let's see what we've got. So here's the first moth. You can see it's in this little cubby hole of the egg carton 
and my goal is to carefully get it out of there and put it into a container. So I'm going to use the butterfly net on this first one and I'm just going to put the carton down in and give it a tap to knock the moth out and then I'll close the net a bit so that it can't fly up out. And then I'm going to carefully go down and cover it with the container. And there we go. There's the first moth. I just wanted to point out this treble bar moth on the outside of the hamper, and that happens occasionally. Now we have seen a lot of these this summer, so I'm going to go ahead and let it fly away. This time I'm going to use my friend's method where he takes the egg carton and taps it onto the towel, leaves it there for a moment to let the moth settle down, and then carefully lifts it off. There's the moth. And I'm going to carefully move it into the container. And there we go. I've just moved the moths from today into the refrigerator. And according to a moth expert friend of mine, you can keep them in the refrigerator up to three days. But I try to have them in there as briefly as possible. So this is a moth I caught yesterday and it is absolutely gorgeous. So I want to take a picture of it today and then release it. I'm just using a cell phone to take the photo of it. It's amazing the pictures you can get with a phone these days. And the last step is to just carefully nudge him into the container not hurting him. I'll take him outside and release him. Here's another cool one that I just took out of the refrigerator and you can see they're a little bit sluggish but they warm up very quickly so you need to get your picture, put them back in the cup and take them outside. Now when it comes to identifying moss that is a challenge because there are so many different species but I wanted to introduce you to my new favorite tool, which is the LEPS Field Guide phone app. And what you do is you upload a photo of what you're trying to identify. And so in my case, it's that gorgeous moth I just showed you. And so once you do that, it pulls up what they think the moth might be. And even though when I photographed this moth, it didn't show me its hind wings, I did see yesterday that it had this coloration on those wings. So it would definitely be a tiger moth. I see there's a Nevada tiger, an ornate tiger, Apentesis tiger. So what I would need to do is see what is typically seen in this region of the Pacific Northwest to get a specific identification. But this app is really helpful.
Now every night we probably catch between 50 and 100 moths. I had no idea there were all of these moths out here. And we do see some repeats. So I'm just capturing just a few so that I can take pictures of them and then I make sure everything is released back into the environment. Now this video goes with my garden column from August 30th and it's about backyard mothing. Now with the column is a list of resources both to help you learn more about moths and also to identify them. And there are a lot of great resources out there. So I hope you'll check it out. It will be on my blog. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I hope you found this interesting and that you'll consider backyard mothing too because it's a lot of fun and it is so educational. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening and mothing.